Hello, today I'm going to be unboxing and giving you a first look at the brand new Biostar B760A Silver Motherboard, which is compatible with Intel's 12th and 13th gen processors. So let's go ahead and get it unboxed and take a closer look at it. So this is everything that comes in the box with the motherboard. So we've got our user manual, we've got a disc with our drivers and utilities on it, we've got our I.O. shield, and we've got four SATA cables with all straight connectors on them. Taking a closer look at the motherboard, working along the bottom from left to right, first of all we've got our HD audio connector, then we've got two system fan headers, followed by a Thunderbolt add-in card header. Next to that we've got an RS-232 COM port header, followed by two USB 2.0 headers. We've then got our system panel header for plugging in our front panel connectors. Next to that we've got a speaker header and just above that we've got our post status checker LEDs. Finally at the bottom right hand side of the motherboard we've got a TPM header and our clear CMOS jumper is just above this. Working up the right hand side of the motherboard first of all we've got four SATA ports. We've then got another two system fan headers giving us a total of four system fan headers on the motherboard. We've then got our USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C front panel connector followed by our USB 3.2 Gen 1 header. Above that we've got a 24 pin power connector and at the top right of the motherboard we've got three RGB headers. Two of them are three pin 5 volt headers and one is a 4 pin 12 volt header. Working along the top of the motherboard we've got our two CPU fan headers. The black one is our CPU fan header whereas the grey one is a CPU opt header. Finally at the top left of the motherboard we've got both an 8 and a 4 pin EPS power connector. The motherboard features a 16 plus 1 plus 1 power phase design and we've got nice beefy aluminium heat sinks over the VRM. In the middle of the motherboard we've got our LGA 1700 socket and standard mounting holes. The motherboard has four RAM slots and can accommodate up to a maximum of 128GB of DDR5 at 6400 mega transfers per second overclocked. And you can see we've got another heatsink with the Biostar logo over the B760 chipset. The motherboard has two by 16 size PCIe slots and it's good to see the top one is reinforced. This one is a Gen 5 slot and will run in by 16 mode. The lower by 16 size slot is a Gen 4 slot and it will run in by 4 mode. And we've also got two PCIe 3.0 by 1 slots. We've got an aluminium heatsink over the top M.2 SSD slot so I'll go ahead and remove that and give you a closer look at it. With the heatsink removed you'll notice that over to the left hand side we've got a socket for an M.2 key E Wi-Fi module and the antenna are included and connected up to the motherboard's rear I.O. In terms of M.2 SSDs for your storage drives the motherboard features three. We've got another one under the top heatsink while the bottom two don't have any heatsinks on them. All three of the drives support PCIe Gen 4x4 speeds, while in the bottom socket you can also install a SATA drive. It is important to note if you install a SATA drive in the bottom M.2 slot that SATA port 1 will be disabled. Likewise if you install a PCIe drive into the middle M.2 slot, the bottom by 16 size PCIe slot on the motherboard will be disabled. You'll notice that the motherboard doesn't come with an integrated I.O. shield and the I.O. shield comes separately in the box. Take a look at our rear I.O. First of all we've got a BIOS flashback button and then we've got a HDMI 2.1 and DisplayPort 1.2 ports. We've then got two antenna ports which you'll find useful if you do decide to add in a Bluetooth and Wi-Fi module. And then we've got six USB 3.2 Gen 2 headers. Five of these are Type-A ports and one of them is Type-C. You'll notice that the Type-A port by itself has a white rectangle around it and this is the one you're going to have to plug your USB into if you want to make use of the motherboard's BIOS flashback function. We've then got two USB 2.0 Type-A ports, a 2.5 gigabit LAN port and finally at the bottom we've got the standard audio connectors. So I think this is a really nice looking motherboard and I'm really looking forward to building with it and in fact this is going to be the next motherboard that I use in a full step-by-step -step build guide on the channel. So if you're not currently subscribed to the channel make sure you hit that subscribe button so you'll be notified about when I make that video. I don't currently have any pricing information yet on the motherboard but what I do once I get it I'll put it into the video description. So hope you have enjoyed this video. If you have please remember to give it a thumbs up and if you're not currently subscribed to the channel please hit the subscribe button as well. Thanks for watching.